Now, following the recent spillage of the Akosombo Dam, the communities of Ahitito and Fiaho have been severely affected. The residents directly attribute the flooding in their areas to the excessive release of water from the dam. They urgently appeal to the government to address the dire road conditions and provide Wellington boots for school children who must navigate through the water to reach their educational institutions. There's more in this report by Fred Duho. Anglo district, specifically at Atito, a number of houses have also been flooded. And we are here basically to see what the situation is. Now, in this house, we are told that the entire compound is flooded and the owners have nowhere to go. Now, this is a heavily contaminated water and the color of it should tell you the level of pollution. Mommy, let's go in the life here, I've been in the life of my Ano <laughs> Ato ni apa kaji wa dora ji ni apa mo. Ni 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 anu ya jojo mo ni aji afia. Hmm, aja aronari. Gaka mi na gaka po ya moto asubo. Agla nu gare mi anchi. Nuka we blano apart from judo people no via wa nuka we blano. Eh, awo na ma ni maga kpo nurapo. We just spoke with one of the residents of Atito in the Anglo district. What she's been telling us is that. Her kitchen is flooded, the compound as well as the port where she used to cook uh, is also flooded. And the entire situation has been recurring, but this year has been severe uh, in that the water has stayed longer than it is expected. And she thought it would have receded by now. But the water, I asked her where the water is coming from. She mentioned that the Volta River that enters into the lagoon at a point overflows its bank and enters into the community and almost everyone is affected. We want to now go into the community and see whether the situation is different. They have stones or blocks in the water that they are able to use to cross to the other side. The school block you see in your short is the JHS of Atito, where students, we understand, still go there to study. Even today, they were there basically to have their lessons. And though the water has surrounded the entire school compound, they have no playground, but they found means to get into the classroom to study. Unfortunately, we missed their lesson period. We got here a bit late but we understand they were here today to study and they've closed school. Tell us about the situation of this school block. Uh, initially, this is supposed to be uh, the nursery, uh, but unfortunately, because of the unfortunate situation that we found ourselves, uh, we decided to convert this place rather to the JHS uh, session and uh, leave the other area for the uh, younger ones to occupy. We invited uh, NADMO, uh, last week and they came with some relief items uh, uh, being like a rice uh, uh, oil and other stuff uh, but what I am still expecting them to still do is uh, to get them some welding boots so that at least they can use that to be crossing uh, the water to uh, get in uh, to their classrooms uh, the water not deep is uh, somehow deep uh, but not all that deep if they get Wellington boots, I tell you, they can use it to cross uh, to the uh, classroom and come back uh, home safely. Yeah. Has the education service come around? Are they aware of the situation? Have they been informed in any way? Yeah, for that I am not aware, uh, but I think uh, they might uh, get aware of what our situation uh, for now, because uh, I am very much aware our uh, headmaster or the headmaster here have been sending reports, uh, daily reports to uh, the education office. So I am very sure he, they will be aware. 
The important question to ask now is where is the water coming from? Uh, we believe that uh, because of the dam spillage uh, happening currently at uh, uh, Akonsobo and uh, its surrounding communities, it moved uh, all the way from Anyanyui down to this side. So this is what is pushing the water to uh, this area. Uh -huh. Has this ever happened before? Not at all, not at all, not at all, not at all. This is the first time we are experiencing something like this. We are on our way to Fiaho, another community that is not quite too far from Atito. They are all within the Anglo district. And the water, as you can see right now, is joining each other at a point. So very soon, this road will be cut off due to the excess water that is trying to make its way to the left side. You can see from the shot where the water from the right has cut off the road at this point entering into the left side. And when you go beyond, which is the left side, you are going to Alakple and other co uh, communities in that area. Alakple is a very, a very popular community that has produced some illustrious sons of this country uh, over the time. Now, these people, I am wondering how they are going to cope should this situation get worse than we see it now. And we are making our way gradually you see the road, the entire road is being washed away. Uh, the water is moving with a certain level of force. The wind is also aiding this movement and is gradually eating off the road. And the situation is getting serious by the day. Now, I know very well that the lagoon is just around here. These people live just by the lagoon because of their fishing expedition. But over time, we understand due to the spillage from the Akosombo Dam, it has caused the river to enter into the lagoon at a point, specifically at Anyanyui, making it rise to a level where it is now coming into this part of other communities within the Anglo district. And from the look of things, if this road should remain here in the next week, or so, then it should be a certain level of miracle. But largely, the situation or the water is receding in the South Tong, North Tong, and Central Tong areas that were hardly hit last two weeks. But the people downstream, which is Anglo and Keta, are now feeling the impact of the situation. Behind me is the school that uh, accommodates a number of pupils in this Fiaho community. They are supposed to be in school on daily basis, but as of now, they have no option than to stay home, basically because their school compound is totally submerged, and the students, for the fear that they may fall in this water and a disaster may occur, they've been asked to stay back home while they wait and see whether this situation recedes. In the coming days, we are told that they've closed school for some time now and the teachers are equally at home. This is Fiaho. I want to believe a number of you know the Kotoka International Airport. Yes, General Kotoka, the airport was named after one famous General Kotoka. And this is the community where he comes from, Fiaho, in the Anglo district. And the entire community where Kotoka comes from is underwater. His statue is in this community where we understand this is where he was brought up before he gained fame and the international airport named after him for some obvious reasons. These elderly women would know a little bit about General Kutuka to tell us. Mommy, Marku, what are you Good. So she's taking me to where the bust of General Kutuka or the man after whom the international airport was named is here. So here is it, here is it, here is it. Come and see it. Enter the house and but, but, see it. Here is. But how it. do you know him? Oh, he is my uncle, real uncle. Oh, okay. And what do you remember him for? 
that's his house and that's my house. Oh, that's interesting. So he's my real uncle. So you've made this beautiful cage here to protect him and everything. But he's he's passed away a very long time ago. Yes, yes, yes. And seeing the community where he comes from, currently underwater, how do you feel? Oh, the water is not good at all. Where is it? Where is General Kotoka? He's my real uncle. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Uh -huh. And uh, now we have that's a monument. Father, that's Kotoka. That's his son. Oh, okay. So the father is here. The, here is father. The father is here. The uh, general himself is here. And then we have the son of Kotoka also here. Yes. That's interesting. Now tell me, uh, taking into account the fact that a monument like the Kotoka International Airport is named after him, what do you make of that? Oh, Kotoka International Airport. Mm. Please, I beg your pardon. Never knew that place. You've never stepped there before. <laughs> you don't know your uncle has a property named after him as Kotoka, as big as Kotoka International Airport. <laughs> I knew it. Would you want to step there one day? Yes. Oh, Very first time coming to the graveyard uh, of General Kotoka, uh, specifically at Fiaho in the Anglo district. And there you see his uh, statue boldly erected and uh, in that significant manner, uh, showing clearly the kind of stunt soldier he was in his days. And today we have Lieutenant General E.K. Kotoka and uh, killed on 17th April 1967. So that is boldly written on his grave. What would you want Ghana to do to remember General Kotoka, aside the fact that you don't even know where the Kotoka International Airport is? <laughs> so what would you want Ghana to do aside... You aside must remember as always. You must remember Fiaho as always. Okay. You, must, you must not forget us. We help the town and the people in the town mm -hmm. to help us. So what kind of help do you want? <laughs> you always need money and the food. Oh, okay. And then, and then your road to, I realize the road leading to his town. Road to. It's not too good. The road to. It's not too good. Auntie, we want to thank you very much. So that is my mother right there telling us about her uncle, E.K., Kotoka, and we are still going to the community to see the extent of damage. But my name is Fred Duho, and I'll be bringing you extensive coverage from the affected flood zones within the downstream of the Volta region following the dam spillage from the Akosombo Dam. And here we are today, almost at the tail end of the Volta River, where we are in the town of EK General. My name is Fred Zuho.